Ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon or good morning for our American friends. Welcome to Biocap Digital. My name is Johan De Koning from AYA, the French Bioeconomic Cluster. And I'm very happy to welcome you for this first webinar of 2021. Today, we are going to explore new challenges and opportunity for the bioeconomy through recent technological advances to improve bacterial strain and alternative protein production. For those who haven't heard yet about us, AYA, the French Bioeconomy Cluster, we would like to invite you first to discover us through a small video. IAR is the French Bioeconomy Cluster. Let's find out the seven services we provide you to support your innovations. Tomorrow's solutions are being developed today from ideas to endorsement and funding of your projects. Our expertise and strategic support will be there to maximize your success. Do you want to diversify your activity to reach a new market? Through our research and consultancy services, we analyze, explain, and help de-risk your business and innovation environment, enabling you to make strategic decisions and identify early adopters and clients. Bioeconomy is a European priority. Having been in Brussels since 2008, we can make sure your voice is heard. We are your ideal partner to access European funding. Innovative startup? Our Investors Club is seeking projects like yours. Thanks to our help, reach out to venture funds and raise the necessary funds to boost your project. Speed up your growth and overcome technological hurdles. Thanks to the innovation platforms of our ecosystem. Our Bioeconomy Leaders Network offers you unique business opportunities. Meet your future business partners and develop your expertise at the many events we organize throughout the year. Conferences, business conventions, tech days. So many opportunities to increase your visibility and promote your activities. Grow your business abroad and give your ambitions new horizons thanks to our international missions and delegations. Brazil, USA, Canada, India, Southeast Asia, we will enhance your tech and business partnerships. In a changing world, we will help you adapt your training courses to the needs of bioeconomy. Access tailor-made skills, from the endorsement of your training classes to posting jobs. IAR services are here for you. Find out more on en.iar-poll.com. Located south of Paris, Genopol is a leading biocluster in the Paris region. They have a strong expertise in technology, assessment, life, life science research, investment analysis, marketing, and business development. They offer services with the aim of providing qualified technical and scientific to support to research activity, to biotechnologies, and to biotechnology startups and growth companies. Today, we are partnering with Genopol for this webinar, and we would like to thank them all and all the invited speakers for having accepted the invitation to share their expertise in today's topics, bacterial strain and alternative protein production. Before starting, I would like to share with you our program for the coming weeks. March will be a very busy month as we have several events for you. The most important one is the digital edition of BioCat. BioCat is our event dedicated to process technology to turn biomass into high valued molecule. Due to the pandemic, the edition will take place in a digital format. During three weeks, you will be able to discover more than 60 technology dispatched in 12 sessions available on VOD, three live sessions, a startup village with at least 15 startups, plus a lot of networking moments, such as digital face-to-face -face meetings and thematics chat rooms. Three weeks for the bioeconomy to do its show. An opportunity as well to meet Genopol. They are one of our main sponsors. They have a digital booth and they organize a live session on March 18, dedicated to the synthetic biology. So stay tuned to get more info on the program for our major event. Not to miss neither, on March 9, our webinar dedicated to the purification of plant proteins. A webinar organized in partnership with Eurodia, a leading company in the downstream process lines. Should you be interested in using our channels to produce your, to promote, sorry, your technology, your services, or to communicate around a research project, we are at your services. Just contact us to discuss your needs. 
Before giving the floor to Laurent, today's chairman, I would like to thank Nail and Annabelle and all the people that have been working hard to make this webinar happen. Its success is yours. Laurent, now it's time for you to take the floor and to share your screen. Thank you, Joanne. Uh, I need... I Sorry. Need... Yes. Oh. <laughs> okay, thank you. Is it okay? Almost. Okay. It's okay now. Perfect. Thank you very much. Thank you, Joanne, for this uh, nice introduction. So let, let me talk a little bit about Genopol for you to understand what we are doing. As uh, Joanne said, we are in the south of Paris, 30 kilometers from, uh, from the Eiffel Tower, so it's not, not so far. And we are uh, outside Paris, which is a good location for, for company if you want to, to reach Europe uh, uh, from, uh, from, from there. Genopol is a leader in biotech, uh, biotechnology. We, are, we have been created in 98. We are working in all kinds of biotech uh, environment, so it can be medical, industrial, environmental, agricultural, agricultural, food, and marine. And we are working to develop a nice and friendly ecosystem for companies. Uh, our mission, our mission is, is to support uh, uh, bio, biotech and innovation. And so we have three main training course, uh, training uh, area for, for companies. So Shaker for small uh, project, Booster for, uh, to incubate companies, and also a development uh, training course. Current, currently, we have three major scientific and industrial sectors where we are going uh, to develop these three sectors. The first one is innovation therapy. Second one, uh, compositional genomics, and the third one is bioeconomy, which is the topic of today. Uh, as you can see on this slide, this is a Genopol campus. Uh, so we are in the same time a biopark and a biocluster. As you as you may see, uh, three companies are going to talk are part of this campus: Insect, Next Protein, and Altar. They are all located in in the same area, which is campus uh, campus one and campus three. Uh, in this campus, you have many kind of company that are located in this area. Currently, Genopol is home of 83 companies. We have 17 academic laboratories and 20, 26 platforms. Those platforms are interesting for com company because you don't need to buy everything. You can use our platform that they are located in our, our uh, Genopol campuses. We have more than 2,000 people working directly on this campus. And we have raised more, almost 1 billion uh, euro in 14 years. Uh, this is some example of companies that we have on the campus. As you can see, we have big, big guys like Illumina, like, uh, uh, like Santen, like New England Biolabs, so means American and Japanese company. We have also Farming, which is a Dutch company. And, and, uh, and also we are growing uh, the bioproduction area and the food tech area in, in our campus. Of course, we can attract uh, many kinds of companies on the, on the campus. We have one incubator for small and startup company. We have mo modular space for more mature companies on the campus. And of course, we have also a business center. Thank you very much. So now to illustrate our uh, um, position in the bioeconomy, let us uh, show us a small uh, movie. Joanne, okay. Genopol, a scientific hub of excellence in all biotechnologies areas. Genopol is here to help you explore the applications of engineering biology. Set to become one of the new bioeconomy key players, Genopol focuses on turning research into solutions and developing the creation and growth of businesses. Genopol supports young researchers and gives rise to scientific leaders, opening new fields of research. Genopol's actions for bioeconomy development are far and wide. Thank you very much. Uh, so uh, in the future, we'll need to find new food and innovation is one of the answers. So Genopol wants to be a major player in this game. So today with three companies, uh, we are going to show you how recent technology can help the bioeconomy in this challenge. So we will start with, uh, with insects. 
the famous insect. So if you have uh, watched uh, the, uh, the Super Bowl, you know everything about, uh, about insects. But let me introduce to uh, Frank Pierre, which is the R&D director of, uh, of Insect. Frank, is your, is your turn. OK, thank you, Laurent. So we share my screen. Perfect. OK, so according to this uh, webinar, um, INSECT uh, will uh, introduce a session. Uh, and our objective at INSECT is to reinvent the food chain. So uh, we are completely accurate, let's say, for this kind of uh, uh, webinar. Um, as a first step, I will introduce a, a bit uh, INSECT company. So Insect Pack Company have been created almost 10 years ago with, uh, by uh, four people. Um, we are located in four, five different sites uh, in France and in the US. And we are located uh, also uh, in, um, in Evry Genopole. It's uh, the place uh, of our um, uh, R&D center. And uh, headquarter in Paris, uh, part of the headquarter in Paris, uh, a factory uh, in Burgundy, uh, a new factory that we are uh, building at the moment uh, uh, north of France, uh, and we are also located in the US. We are at the moment uh, 150 people employed, with uh, 250 uh, at the end of the year, with uh, the age of 30 years old. We have um, more than 50 uh, awards in different uh, areas, innovation, new business and economy and management too. And uh, we uh, partnership with um, uh, different uh, academic and non-academic organization, uh, around 30, uh, perhaps a bit more. And we lead uh, some major projects at the European and uh, French uh, level. Uh, since um, 2020, uh, we are part of the uh, next uh, 40. And uh, a few days ago, it was confirmed for, for the year 2021, that is a uh, a good, um, a good information. So now let me um, show you a two minute film in order to, to know a bit more about insects, about our objective, about our mission, uh, how we can uh, imagine to reinvent the food chain. Founded in 2011 in Paris, France by scientists and environmental activists, Insect is the world leader in natural insect protein. The company transforms insect into premium high value ingredients for organic animal feed and fertilizers. By 2050, we will need to increase food production by more than 70% to meet the needs of people globally. Yet only 5% more arable land is available. Insect thus provides a natural and sustainable solution by offering an alternative protein using 98% less land and 50% less resources. Welcome to the first insect factory. We implement an innovative proprietary technology protected by 30 patents to develop our vertical farms, allowing us to farm our insects with a low surface impact and a carbon negative footprint. The vertical farm is fully automated by robots feeding, hatching, acidifying, and finally processing the insect protein. Our company develops AI models as well as computer vision to create the optimal environment for insect production. It currently produces hundreds of tons of Tenebrio Molitor protein, oil, and fertilizer for the trillion dollar animals nutrition and agriculture markets. Insect employs a highly talented global workforce, over 130 people from 20 countries in France and in the US to tackle current and future feed, food, and environmental challenges. Insect is building its second production site one hour north of Paris, the largest insect farm in the world, which will produce up to 100,000 tons per year. By 2022, the project aims to create 500 direct and indirect jobs. It will also be the first carbon negative vertical farm in the world. Insect has been rewarded with more than 50 prizes and distinctions, placing us among the companies considered to be the most innovative and attractive by the French government and press globally. Insect, reinventing the food chain. So as mentioned in the video, um, uh, 
uh, we, we are facing a uh, different kind of, uh, of uh, issue and, uh, and challenges all over, all over the globe. I will not come back to, to the point that I um, already mentioned in the video, but it comes at the end to uh, limited resources, do more with less, climate change, biodiversity, and uh, in order to, to tackle this kind of issue, a circular economy is the solution, and we need to find alternative and sustainable resources. The insect class uh, is the most important class uh, uh, that exists on Earth. Uh, it represents 50% of the, uh, the overall species that are uh, currently living on Earth, uh, um, so a huge uh, amount. Uh, um, within this, uh, this also species, there is a uh, coleoptera, coleoptera 40% of, of it. And the scar monitor milworm is part of coleoptera. There's also other species. Uh, but in fact, at the end, uh, at the moment, for the moment, uh, we uh, in the insect uh, business um, rear only seven uh, species. Uh, sure, uh, scar monitor milworm, Black sword of fly, cricket, for example, on the, are on the very top of the, the insect that we are usually um, reared. Um, saying that, there is a huge potential, sure, and there is some other things to explore for the future. But I would like to, under, to underline that uh, insects uh, bring innovative, natural, and sustainable solutions, uh, as mentioned in, in the film. The second point also, uh, it's something very important because uh, uh, in a circular economy, the insect that we rear uh, in our company and in other company also, uh, um, allow to recycle various byproducts coming from agriculture uh, that somebody, some people call waste, even if it's not, they are not waste huh, because we don't use waste in Europe, we use byproducts and uh, we, in fact, recycle this byproduct, uh, uh, generating uh, um, uh, substances, elements with high uh, value like protein, uh, oil, or, or another uh, element like this. Um, in addition to that, um, with the technology we develop at insects, uh, we, uh, in uh, vertical uh, farming, for example, uh, we also have a positive uh, impact um, on the environment. Uh, locally, because in fact, we save land and we produce in fact, just at the figure, uh, 100 times more uh, uh, than uh, normal, let's say, um, usual animal farm, 100 times uh, more efficient. And also concerning ocean biodiversity, uh, as you probably know or don't know, uh, fish are usually uh, uh, fed, feed with uh, other small fish that are uh, fish on the oceans. So in fact, we, we contribute to save a part of the uh, ocean livestock, avoiding or trying to avoid uh, 20 or 25 percent uh, uh, fish that are collected to, uh, to feed uh, uh, large fish. So insect is a huge potential. The insect are huge potential. And uh, sure, at insect, we have selected the milworm, the scarab monitor, uh, and we rear it uh, with a pattern process uh, uh, that uh, allow to uh, be an alternative for uh, animal feed, animal protein in animal feedstuff, uh, plant and soil, uh, and also for human food. Some figures uh, also uh, that were mentioned also in the film, but I will uh, underline two or three. Um, there is a health benefit also on a growing benefit for, for, the, for, the, for the fish, for example, 35% of rebel truth yield, for example, and, and, for, and um, minus 40% of shrimp mortality. This just for example is based on a research and study that we have performed uh, with uh, an independent university in Greece, in France and in Germany, for example. Okay, so as a conclusion of uh, uh, this part, uh, that is the why basically and the beginning of the solution, our objective is uh, it's a bit ambitious, but it's to revolutionize the food chain uh, at every level of the food chain. And uh, thanks to science and technology uh, applied in, in an industrial project, we uh, would like to be able to do that. 
uh, and to combine, in fact, our science and technology within a vertical farm that uh, uh, we already have and we will continue to, uh, to, uh, to build uh, right now and in the near future. In addition to, to that, uh, reinventing the food chain is also uh, to assure the transition of insect milborne from a secondary uh, food source to a primary one for human consumption. So, um, as we know, in Western country, a uh, few years ago, it sounded a bit weird and surprising uh, to be able uh, to one day to, 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 to eat uh, uh, insects or to eat, uh, eat ingredients coming from insects. But uh, in fact, not for 2.5 million uh, inhabitants all over the globe, in Asia, in uh, Africa, or in, Central, uh, or in Central America, we usually eat insects. So the issue, in fact, at, uh, that exists and exists less and less, uh, it was the regulation uh, I will speak about, uh, and uh, also the behavior that we have in a Western country in order to accept uh, to, to eat insect directly or indirectly. We do it indirectly because when we eat fish, for example, that are fed, fed with, uh, with insects, uh, uh, insect participate uh, pay to, um, to this kind of um, uh, food chain. So though demand is undoubtedly uh, growing, uh, there is of course a reservation from, this, from the global population and uh, uh, but there is good reason now uh, to be more than optimistic uh, to use uh, insects uh, directly uh, in the human food. So, uh, in fact, as I mentioned before, there, there is two uh, points that were barrier, let's say, to, to uh, be able to, to feed directly human uh, with uh, insects. One of the barriers is uh, the, the behavior. The second one is the regulation. So the regulation, as you probably know, for the people that uh, are connected with this kind of uh, business, um, Europe, EFSA, the, the, um, um, the, the authority about uh, safety uh, uh, in Europe, um, uh, new, is newly favorable uh, for the use uh, of uh, uh, some insects uh, for human food. And um, for, especially for milvorm, it was mentioned a few, few days ago, it needs to be, uh, let's say, uh, uh, officialized by the European Commission, but we are quite optimistic that it will appear uh, during this year uh, in order to uh, allow insect producer of milvorm, uh, SCAR monitor, uh, to, uh, to enter in within uh, this business. And it will, it will give also an opportunity for all the insect industry. Because in the insect industry, even if we can be competitors in different areas, uh, we, we uh, uh, are federated within the EPIF uh, uh, federation in order to, to promote our solution uh, for the future. Um, and we are waiting for, for, so, uh, for the official agreement. Uh, that is a novel food dossier that uh, we, uh, we have already uh, transferred to, to the Europe um, authorities. From our point of view at Insects Company, uh, uh, the opportunity and added value in human food is mainly on nutrition and health. Uh, it means sport, muscle regeneration, senior elderly people. From premium ingredient, LC food, and perhaps one day to a people menu to have it on the table. But uh, in fact, our key objective is to address what uh, our milvorm is uh, able to do. In fact, is to provide, uh, as mentioned in the bottom part of the, um, of the presentation, uh, natural protein, uh, very rich protein, 72%, it's what the highest protein rate uh, in all insect categories, well-balanced amino acid, high digestibility and a very low allergen risk. So uh, this uh, ingredient, uh, milvorm protein, is really a solution for this kind of business. Nutrition, health, and is a key uh, uh, technical ingredient. Um, as mentioned before, in Europe, but not only, we are at the moment uh, uh, applying for a dossier in US too. 
So, sure, there is a, 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 a why, let's say, a reason why we do that. There is uh, uh, some solution that we have. Uh, 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 Scaram Milvorm is one of them. Uh, but to succeed in this kind of business, uh, uh, science and technology is not uh, enough. Uh, definitely, we need the support of investors. We need to have clients, science and technology already mentioned, and people's skill and commitment too. And at Insect, we combine those different elements already. Um, which is what I call the success factor, basically, uh, to come from a startup to, uh, to, uh, to a real uh, uh, enterprise that will uh, be able to, uh, uh, to deploy uh, its solution all over the globe. So finance and support, um, as you probably know, it was uh, mentioned in the media uh, all over the globe also with more than 800 articles worldwide. Uh, we uh, have the financial support and we have... Uh, a total financing amount of 425 million US dollars uh, from investors all over the globe, in Europe, in Asia, in, uh, in America, with a very successful one that uh, everybody knows, uh, one part of the Avenger. Um, um, the, we have also the support of European Union and uh, national and local authorities to through the project that we manage. We at the uh, house. At that stage, in the insect company, we have already uh, 105 uh, million US dollars of contract already signed with the client in different area. Uh, in the wine business, uh, our fertilizer, organic fertilizer for the, for the wine business. Uh, in aquaculture, as mentioned, because aquaculture is a huge business uh, uh, in Europe and uh, in, uh, all over the globe. Uh, and um, also uh, uh, fertilizer for, um, for jardin, for garden, for these kind of things with other partners. Pet food, sure. And now uh, human food. And we're, we have already signed a contract in uh, human food. Uh, in terms of science and technology, because it's, it is a fundamental uh, uh, thing of our uh, business. Uh, we have uh, around uh, 30 patent uh, family uh, representing 250 patents all over the globe. Uh, the larger R&D center in insect industry located at Genopole, uh, uh, one of our partners. And uh, also, and last but not least, um, uh, the largest insect farm uh, in the world that is under construction. You can see a picture uh, here. It will be almost like this. Uh, it is the vertical farm 4.0 because uh, fully automated with uh, IoT inside and uh, uh, huge effort, let's say, in terms of automation. We will produce uh, uh, 100 kiloton of ingredient per year uh, with our objective 200 uh, kiloton. And the pollution will start uh, early uh, 2022. Uh, in addition to that, last but not least, we are carbon negative. In, in this uh, vertical farm uh, in the north uh, of Paris uh, at Amiens. Uh, we have performed a study with independent uh, organization because uh, at Insect Company, everything we do inside, we, we want to uh, validate them with uh, uh, independent or academic organization. And uh, the calculation uh, um, obtained is a minus uh, uh, 10 kiloton uh, of carbon, and we will continue this kind of uh, effort, uh, not only for ca about carbon, but about all other uh, kind of resources that we need to produce uh, uh, our protein or our products. And uh, as mentioned, it's a bit, a bit uh, of clin d'oeil, as we say in French. Uh, we start at four, uh, we are now 150. Well, at the end of the year, will be 250, and we hope to, to deploy, let's say, uh, our solution over the globe. Uh, and we will generate, for example, uh, at Amiens, uh, 500 local jobs uh, that will uh, uh, participate, let's say, to, uh, to, the, to the social community and to the environment uh, in that region. So in terms of um, research and development, uh, uh, just before the presenting the our uh, in farm uh, vertical farm, uh, in terms of research and uh, on innovation, uh, it is uh, with very uh, various uh, dimension. Let's say uh, 
uh, sure, in sectors boundary, that is the fundamental thing uh, for us and for our colleagues also uh, from other companies in terms of nutrition, health and genetic. Uh, we have, uh, let's say, the best in class. We combine if, uh, with uh, key partners on Genopole also and uh, all over the globe for this kind of, uh, of uh, subject. Uh, let's say we manage also all the rearing techniques on geo engineering that we transfer at scale at, in a vertical farm because it's good to do it in a lab, but it's better to do it in a, in a huge uh, and important factory in order to tackle these uh, global challenges man mentioned uh, at the beginning. Uh, we also develop biotechnology with high value molecule and substance concentration coming from our insect uh, scar monitor millworm. And uh, uh, in addition to that, by ourselves or with partner, uh, we uh, develop um, uh, infrared technology, imagery, uh, and the others are quite uh, obvious, temperature and humidity. But all these sensors are within our vertical farm, uh, partially uh, in uh, Dol, in Burgundy, and uh, completely in our new factory, new um, vertical farm uh, in Amiens. IoT, and also last but not least, because there is also data analyst and data scientist uh, in our kind of business. It's a fundamental part, and one of our founder is a, a part of that of that team. Uh, data science is very important for us. We analyze everything from uh, cradle to grave, let's say, uh, the early beginning of the research and development to the very end, uh, in order to uh, to have a, a better understanding of uh, everything in our business. So from R&D exploration to industrial operation, uh, we integrate everything vertical farm to generate premium products, innovation and application for field, plant and, uh, and human food. Uh, to finish the presentation, uh, I will propose a, a, a little film uh, that will summarize a part of our process and a part of our solution that will exist in the near future uh, in Amiens and that we'll have to deploy uh, uh, you know, all over the globe in order to contribute to reinvent the food chain. Here it is. So um, as a conclusion, if you want to participate in this adventure, do not hesitate to contact us and do not hesitate to, to join us if uh, you think that you have uh, added value for reinventing the food chain. Thank you. Thank you very much, Frank. You, <laughs> you have a very complete and very interesting uh, presentation. You have already a lot of questions. Uh, so we are very proud that the insect is at Genopole and uh, we can see that everything uh, start and still continuing to increase at Genopole and in the rest of the world. That's very interesting. Just for the audi uh, audience, we will take uh, only, sorry, but only three questions per, uh, per company. And we'll uh, address that at, at the end of this, uh, of all the presentation for all the company. So anyway, now let's go to another company, uh, Next Protein. They joined Genopole uh, one year ago. And so um, we are very proud also to have them on, on Genopole. And let me uh, give the floor to Etienne Renault, which is the head of strategy at Next Protein. And, uh, and also Chloe will uh, Bruce, that she's a senior researcher uh, from Next Protein. Thank you for having us. Uh, first, I'd like to start by thanking uh, Genopol and the team for uh, setting up this event and, uh, and inviting us to, to participate in this conversation on the, on the latest trends uh, in our industry. Um, I realized that um, in the audience, we have a few uh, members of our industry or people that are simply very knowledgeable about what our industry is, stands for. But I'll start with a brief recap um, of, um, of what our industry is and has accomplished and the unique value proposition that uh, NextProtein has. And then I'll let my colleague, uh, Chloe, our nutrition specialist, uh, to deep dive um, in our approach and strategy when it comes to uh, raw materials and, uh, and animal nutrition. So NextProtein is a project that's now a bit more than five years old. Uh, we're headquartered in Paris and uh, we have our first two production facilities uh, in Tunisia. Next Protein was born out of the ambition essentially to, to tackle three challenges. Um, the first one is the projected 
uh, global protein gap. Uh, by 2050, we'll be uh, around 50, uh, 10 billion people on the planet. And as a result, uh, demand for protein will increase by a factor of two. So considering our food system uh, today and how stretched they already are, we're incapable of facing that demand as it is. Not only do we need to produce more protein, we also need to produce it more sustainably. If you look at um, our conventional sources of protein, so for example, uh, soya production, uh, which has led to widespread deforestation or fish meal, so fish protein production, which has led to the depletion of our fish stocks in both oceans and seas, uh, not only we need to produce more proteins, we need to produce them better. Last but not least, uh, food waste. Um, currently around the world, um, we're wasting around 30% of all the, the food uh, that's being produced. So urgently, we need to uh, learn to reintegrate uh, these nutrients in our food systems. So that's how our industry, the insect farming industry emerged in this context. Insects emerge as a solution to all three challenges. Uh, insects can feed on um, any type of waste. So from manure to fruits and vegetables to seal by products, insects are very flexible. Not only they're flexible, but they're also extremely efficient at converting uh, that kind of waste. Um, if you look at their food conversion ratio, if you look at the um, land requirements, water requirements, CO2 emitted per kilo of uh, protein produced, insects are unbeatable compared to all the conventional sources of protein, if you look at beef, if you look at soya, and so on. More interestingly, if you look at our industry today, um, the vast majority of players have chosen the black soldier fly um, to, to get started. And there is a reason for that. If you want to target the commodity market, um, so the demand of protein in agriculture, in pet food, in poultry, and so on, uh, there are two reasons that uh, made uh, BSF the preferred choice. Uh, the first one is the life cycle. Um, if, you, uh, if you look at the BSF, the life cycle is a bit more than uh, 30 days. And not only is it better economics, it's also operationally safer. If you have any problem in your, in your production, you can replace a batch in a short amount of time, which is not the case with other insects. Uh, some, uh, for some of them, it will take double that amount of time. The second factor that explains why the BSF is becoming like more and more uh, adopted around the globe is going to be the feedstock flexibility. Uh, the BSF can feed on, uh, on an extremely wide array of uh, organic waste. So again, fruits and vegetables, seal byproducts, and so on, whereas other insects are going to be more limited. So this has made the BSF basically uh, fit for any environment. In this context, uh, next protein, so um, developed like quite uh, a unique uh, business proposi value proposition, sorry, uh, with a heavy focus on uh, cost efficiency. We did not um, choose Tunisia and we're not going to choose the countries like Tunisia uh, by accident. Uh, Tunisia is, uh, was a strategic decision mainly due to the fact um, that uh, temperature-wise, climate-wise, it has almost like optimal condition from an uh, insect development uh, perspective. Uh, we get like a, their optimal uh, temperature, which is like 25 degrees or 77 Fahrenheit, eight months out of 12. Uh, in France, where, uh, where we have our headquarter, we would get that two months out of 12 tops. So in terms of uh, energy bill, we have been able to drastically reduce it uh, through our allocation. Second, technologically, uh, we made the decision to develop most of our equipment and processes in the house so as to become less capex intensive and more importantly, to be able to constantly improve uh, these equipment and processes as we go to constantly be, able to be in a position to, to reduce cost. Then last but not least, raw materials. And I think that's what makes us uh, the most unique at the end of the day. Uh, Next Protein decided um, on day one to focus on raw materials, uh, waste actually, uh, not by product, that are widely available and that have no uses, uh, thereby making them widely affordable. We want to focus on waste that are literally like a not used and that would have otherwise ended up in landfills, so as to reintegrate them into the, our food systems. So again, our choice to go for fruits and vegetables, 
pres uh, presented several challenges, and I'll let my uh, my colleague uh, Chloe uh, detail them uh, in a few seconds. But it has also made us extremely adaptable uh, and flexible in relation to, to raw materials, so that we can project ourselves nowadays in any environment and integrate whatever waste we can find uh, in all corners of the globe. Um, so that's uh, that's it for the overview, and I'll let my uh, my colleague uh, Chloe to tell our uh, strategy in terms of raw material and uh, insect nutrition. Thank you. Thank you, Etienne. So I'll now detail what makes Next Protein unique uh, and just develop a bit more what Etienne just uh, et explained. So first, let's have a glimpse at our process. So we design a process that is uh, by, nature, by nature highly efficient and uh, which maximize circularity. As explained, we're uh, recycling organic inputs and fruits and vegetable waste um, that are locally available in Tunisia. We are located in a quite strategic location since all the fruits and vegetable waste are collected less than 20 kilometers away from the factory. And from those waste, we design an optimal feed mixture, which is provided to the larvae. Uh, those larvae come from flies, which are raised at the stable density uh, on eggs are collected daily to ensure synchron synchronous hatching. And those larvae uh, grow and are fed during uh, about a week with this optimal feed mixture. Then the larvae are seeds to separate the insect frost, uh, so the insect frost and remaining substrate from the larvae. Some larvae are saved to be reintroduced into the fly cages, so uh, the cycle starts again. And the remaining larvae are used uh, as products, so they are killed, hygienized, and a, a mechanical extraction is done to separate the protein powder, a fine protein powder uh, out of uh, larvae and the insect oil and both ingredients so we call them next meal on next oil can be incorpor incorporated into animal feed so it could be uh, feed for pet food fish or poultry the third product that we produce is next grow so uh, it's basically insect for us and it has some amazing properties to improve soil fertility uh, it also improves microbi microbial life around the roots and it increases water retention. So basically it's giving back to the ground um, insect frost. And it's uh, a, a positive circle to increase yields locally uh, of the, the plants that are treated with next growth. So um, we are actually highly competitive because we uh, leverage fruits and vegetable waste. And this has huge advantages because we're dealing with huge volumes. As Etienne just mentioned, fruits and vegetable are widely available around the world and it's an untapped resource, meaning that uh, in many places, they usually end up in landfills. In Tunisia, for example, there is no methanization path. So um, it's a pure waste. So our unique proposition is to recycle this waste and to have a sustainable start uh, in our production system. Um, it also enables us to uh, have access to a very affordable resource. And so it, that makes us really competitive. The last advantage is that uh, we are able to replicate or process in many locations in the world. So that makes us as well replicable. Yet, we have to deal with an amazing diversity because fruits and vegetables are by nature really diverse. We have to deal with seasonal variability. It's obviously not the same types of fruits and vegetables which are available during winter and during summer. All fruits and vegetables globally have a very high water content that we need to manage uh, to obtain an ideal texture. And we deal with a great diversity of nutrient composition. So it's not an easy raw material yet. Uh, because we target stable end products, uh, an homogeneous feed texture on a nutritious feed, 
we developed an extensive understanding of black soldier fly nutrition um, that we are now able to adapt or feed preparation process to ensure stable end products, whatever the variability we get in our inputs. And that's really one of our strengths. To um, better learn how to deal with black soldier fly on this variability, we developed um, significant capabilities in research on development. So we have capabilities both uh, well, in France and in Tunisia, in France, we can perform trials at lab scale uh, with uh, a team of five researchers located in Genopole. And in Tunisia, we have access to a pilot plant, which is actually really amazing to confirm hy hypothesis, but also um, deal with the daily challenges of the factory. And so both scale, nourish each other, and that's really interesting uh, to have this approach as a research. Here are a few examples of uh, R&D initiatives. So um, about larvae metabolism, uh, the goal was to unravel larvae metabolism and to identify essential nutrients for the larvae. This is key because if we know what, is, what nutrients are essential for insects, then we're able to adapt the feed mixture and provide exactly the right amount of each uh, fruit and vegetable waste that we collect. And so we are able to uh, set up in any newer environment and to deal with any kind of uh, raw materials we, we can collect. We also studied quite exten extensively the impact of feed content on the final product composition. Uh, this is essential to better understand how we can uh, ensure to have stable end products, but also how feasible it is to tailor the nutrition system on the products to target specific uh, industries, for example, aquaculture. Uh, we also have other ongoing projects that I won't detail here about how to better optimize the feed mix um, preparation. So it can be working more on what components of the feed can be digested versus what is left over, uh, on what kind of pre-treatments can improve even more the digestibility of the feed. It can be also about uh, how to adapt the feed texture because texture is absolutely key for uh, insects normal development, but also for the process, uh, we need to have a, a consistent texture. So those were just a few examples of uh, research and development projects that are ongoing. And to give you now a bit of perspective of where we're going, um, we, in 2025, we're aiming to reach 100, thousand metric tons of installed capacity uh, in several corners of the world, world, so it could be South Asia or North America, and this will be achieved um, with several factories set up uh, in those areas. So far, we are expanding in Tunisia, so we had this pilot uh, plant of uh, 400 metric tons of installed capacity ready and we are now expanding with a second uh, factory but that's only the beginning of the journey um, so thank you very much for listening to us and um, please feel free to contact us on any of our platforms you have uh, everything on this last, last slide we'll be happy to uh, discuss with you thank you Thank you. Okay, still is there. Okay, thank you, Chloe. Chloe? Yes. <laughs> no, no, thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, you, you are still on. You, you have to stop to, to. Okay, thank you. Perfect. Thank you, Chloe. Thank you, uh, Etienne. It was a great presentation again. Uh, in regard with insect, uh, we wish you all the best and we are here for to help you in your development. You know that already. So uh, let's talk another, another subject, another species. We go from insect to, uh, to small. Uh, small bacteria uh, with, uh, with uh, Altar. And let me introduce you with uh, Simon Tranca, who is the CEO of Altar. This uh, company is uh, on, G on Genopole uh, for uh, almost five years now. And we are very proud to have uh, Simon and, and Altar on, uh, on Genopole. So 
Simon, the floor is yours. You can go. Thank you. Uh, I cannot uh, turn on my camera, ah. but it's not very important. I first try to share my screen. Okay. Okay, can you hear me? Yes. Can, can you see the screen? Yes. We can hear you and we see you as well. Okay, so and let's yeah. start. Okay, so hi everyone. Uh, my name is uh, Simon Trenkard. I'm uh, co-founder and president at Altar. And as uh, Laurent said, uh, we're based in uh, Genopol, Evry. We're a biotech startup. We work with microorganisms. And I'd like to uh, thank for the invitation by a I, A, R, it's hard to talk in English, and uh, Genopole to talk about domestication of microorganisms for sustainable food production. So uh, we go from insect to microbes, and uh, I will make a presentation which is on purpose, a very anthropocentric uh, perspective, um, because at the end of the day, sustainability is not to save the planet, but to save humans, right? So I would start with a statement is that it is in human nature to take nature as granted. What does that mean? It means that we believe that every living organisms around us as, as they are and they cannot change and we have to cope with them and we have to use them as they are. Uh, recently, the coronavirus situation uh, has made everybody aware that it is not true uh, because of the variants and uh, this dynamic uh, living process is not only a threat, it's actually also uh, a lot of opportunities to develop sustainable uh, alternatives to produce what we need every day. And when it deals with microorganisms, which has very high potential to convert renewable or recycled feedstocks into valuable compounds, it often leads to prohibitive production costs because the engineering of the bioprocess has to uh, be adapted to what the microorganism is capable to do. And we consider that the microbe has given characteristics and then we design the process uh, with these constraints. And this explains why there are so few uh, industrial process involving microorganisms uh, around the world that that can efficiently uh, convert to renewable and recycled materials when compared to the potential. And we propose to shift the paradigm and no longer adapt the process to the microbe, but instead adapt the microbe to the industrial needs. But before that, I'd like to talk a bit about domestication because this is actually a human activity that started 15,000 years ago, according to which human will interfere in the natural process of selection, or natural selection, to um, pick living organisms with desired properties to meet human's needs. And uh, that's how we have uh, domesticated animals and plants for a while and even microbes for more, more recently, but so uh, for, for thousands of years. And uh, which is very interesting is that it is very powerful because from a common ancestor like a wolf, we were able actually to select for a very wide array of different dogs that have distinct phenotypes. Uh, uh, they look differently. They also have different uh, behaviors. And it shows that uh, we, by applying the appropriate selection uh, pressure, we can specialize uh, different variants according to our criteria. The same occurs for microorganisms, uh, which are domesticated for maybe 5,000 years. And the most commonly used uh, microbe is uh, yeast uh, Saccharomyces cerevisiae. And this is a picture which shown how evolution may be represented in terms of uh, phylogenetic for uh, 628 strains according to their domestication for food and beverages uh, utilizations uh, by humans. And which, in, which is interesting is that it highly depends on the geography. And one reason may be because 
it was unintentional first because during thousands of years we we're not even aware of the existence of microbes so it was like unintentional domestication and a main reason for that is maybe the size of the microbe because when we compare to a wolf which is a major size or even to a tenebrium molitor bug uh, by in, uh, uh, that insect uses in its process which you can see and you can easily isolate and uh, select a bacterium is a um, one micrometer scale so it's a million times smaller than a wolf you cannot see and you can not easily even when you know it exists you cannot easily isolate it and uh, select them so but in turn microbes are very good uh, also properties and the scale the size is also very interesting as a benefit because it means that in a reasonable volume you can gather a very high a very large population and if you think about evolution it means that you will be able to create a large diversity in a reasonable volumes and another factor is also the the the, the pace at which the organism reproduces so we've uh, heard before that um, tenebrio molitor is maybe two three months uh, the bug by next protein is maybe a month, but the bacterium, it duplicates every hour or every two, three, four hours. So it means that in a given time period, you will have much more generations that are, uh, that are crossed by a bacterium when compared to other organisms, which means that if you want to achieve very significant objectives in terms of domestication, you can achieve them easily with bacterium or other microorganisms uh, when compared to uh, longer uh, generation organisms. Still, the potential has to be explored because the activity to isolate microorganisms and work with them at the lab is very recent. And the first pure culture of microbes that was isolated uh, was by uh, Emil Christian Hansen at the Carlsberg Brewery and he's isolated uh, Lager B yeasts. And we are still learning on how to cultivate strains, uh, pick among the diversity, isolate, grow them and adapt them to our needs. So we're still at the beginning and the potential of microbes, which is huge, still has to be explored in our opinion. So what, would be the challenges to domesticate them. So first is, as I mentioned before, they are small, invisible. And if you want to grow them and manipulate them, you must work in sterile conditions with invisible organisms. And sterile conditions are mandatory. And you may know that you have microbes everywhere on your bench, on your skin. And so it's, it's, a, it's a potential uh, limit. How we can change microbes so we could harness natural selection but what kind of diversity will be generated and uh, you're probably aware that uh, there is a significant advance in uh, genome editing tools in the last years which become more and more affordable more and more efficient more and more versatile I would, uh, however it's not sufficient because Somebody has to tell you which modifications you must perform in the genome to achieve the targeted phenotype. And for certain applications, and the food industry in Europe at least uh, is a very good example, is that GMOs are banned either by regulation or in consumers. So how can you generate this diversity and how you can select among the variants? So that's the very important questions that you have to address while domesticating microbes. And at Altar, we try to keep it very simple so, uh, so that it can be efficiently implemented. And we design hardware and software in order to have nature working for us so that we can help nature to eventually help us humans. So we are involved in an activity of research and development that aim to, uh, to have strains of industrial relevance 
uh, and we develop them uh, in partnerships with our customers and other collaborators uh, using a proprietary technology for adaptive evolution. And it is, in our views, a very nice tool. Because again, when you, when you consider the challenges I've mentioned before, you must have the right tool to, to cope with microbe. And it's important to start working with the appropriate equipment, the appropriate technology. And so we've spent the last years, maybe it was, it was 20 years of development to achieve a robust and reliable technology that now is ready for use for your project and to uh, deliver results, which is a strain adapted to the industrial requirement. So what it is, it is a fluidic device, which is fully standalone. It means it works autonomously without any interruption, so with no contamination, as long as necessary, provided you, you, you can replace empty bottles by, by new ones. And these devices enable the continuous cultivation of microbial suspensions under conditions controlled by algorithms. So it means that you can perform a long-term experiment, long-term being three, six, nine months, you, you, you tell it. And during this period of time, we will go through hundreds, thousands of generations because they are thriving quite fast and conditions will change automatically adjusted by the actual adaptation of the microbe. And only the microbes that can adapt to the changing conditions will be selected. And this is a very powerful tool that has proven to be relevant for uh, any kind of microbe that can grow in suspension, ranging from bacteria, yeasts, or microalgae. And this is used to support uh, strain development projects in very uh, wide range of, of market industries. Uh, we provide access to academic and uh, private organizations that develop strains for agriculture, food and feed, health, uh, chemicals, uh, or biofuels. So if we look at sustainable production, which is the, the, the topic today, actually there are microbes involved in feeding and protecting Humans, animals, plants can be fermentation to produce flavor and fragrances, vitamins, enzymes, uh, proteins, uh, or you can use probiotics for humans or cattle. It can be biostimulants or biocontrol solutions for to replace fossil-based uh, pesticides and fertilizers. So there are several applications that can um, be addressed by uh, microorganisms in the entire uh, food uh, chain. And here I'd like to focus a bit on um, one application, which is the single cell protein, because today we, we told a lot about insect proteins, but microbes also have a good potential for it. And it's actually a very long uh, story because the research started a century ago and we already had uh, industrial scale uh, production of uh, single cell proteins, which are microbial cells that contain a high content of proteins. And Germany during World War I and II uh, produced uh, uh, alternative proteins this way to counteract the food shortages during war. And later on during the 60s and 70s of last century, uh, there were even programs to convert fossil based resources into single cell protein. So now the, the challenge is different. Uh, we must be more sustainable, uh, otherwise the, the, the world will be unbalanced. And we are looking for alternative feedstocks, which can be locally available, renewable or recycled. And there is a number of projects that can grow single cell protein from uh, glucose or for second generation sugars that are obtained from lignocellulose or even from C1 molecules, CO2, CO, methane, or methanol uh, that are developed around the world. It's a growing business and uh, there are several companies involved. And you may have heard last month that uh, Air Protein US company raised uh, 30 million uh, to develop uh, microbes uh, that can convert CO2 uh, into protein. So it's a very dynamic field. 
and we've worked on one project of this type uh, on the single cell protein yeast um, that was given to us and was already quite uh, good at uh, utilizing C5 sugar coming from uh, lignocellulose. But still, we were able to further increase growth rate on that sugar by 45% about two months, and therefore increase the productivity of our client's uh, process. I've put here another example of uh, application of our technology to domesticate E. coli to grow at lower temperature. So E. coli grows well at 37 degrees Celsius, but if you put at 28, it grows very slowly, but we can select for mutations that will enable the strain to grow faster and faster and recover the growth rate at 37 degrees about in about uh, six months. And this may be of interest to uh, food and beverages companies that want to develop fermentation processes at low temperature. Well, without to lose uh, productivity. And last, uh, it's uh, just to mention that we were involved in a probiotic uh, project uh, to develop a bacterium that can be used as a human probiotic and that can degrade uh, a toxic compound. And we could select for uh, faster and faster utilization of this toxic compound as a nutrient source. We achieved a seven-fold increase in growth rate within six months. And later it continued with adaptation to other individuals. And eventually the bacterium is much more adapted to the requirement because it can, it can develop with the gut, dominate in the microbiome population and have a efficient and prolonged action. So there will be several other uh, things to tell, but I think I'm, I should finish now. I uh, hope you enjoyed the presentation and, and I will be glad to answer your questions. Thank you, Simon. Yeah, very interesting. You know, uh, as you know me, I love your this uh, kind of uh, subject about genetic, you know, domestication. Everything is very, very interesting. Uh, anyway, so now let's 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 go on uh, on question. So let let me start with one for for insect and next protein finally because you know this is a uh, the subject is is for both of uh, those companies. So uh, so the first question is what do insect or maybe next protein believe will limit uh, insect protein production going forward. Uh, do you believe that there is enough food waste to support insect production on a global scale? Or do you think we need to find new uh, uh, sustainable insect feeds? What do you think about that? Um, Fra Frank, I can you? start. Um, well, in fact, uh, we, we are a, a little part of a global solution that is huge. First of all, the, 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 let's say the, the market business uh, in terms of uh, feed on, on, uh, on fertilizer is uh, $1,000 billion. So uh, there is a huge uh, uh, opportunity for our kind of business, uh, next protein, uh, on insect, and other insect producer. Um, the market is, is huge. The source also, uh, uh, the, the, the feedstock that we use is uh, considerable. Uh, we speak usually about waste, but in fact, just in brackets, waste in, 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 in Europe is something that is really regular uh, with uh, high regulation. So it means that uh, uh, when we speak about byproducts uh, or when we speak about waste, we need to assure a perfect traceability of what we use uh, as a feed for insects. We cannot use in Europe uh, uh, manure or waste of uh, industries that we don't have under control. Uh, in perhaps in other countries like this, but in the insect industry, at least uh, in, in Europe, uh, there is a huge legislation on that. Um, and uh, to come back to, to the question uh, concerning the feedstock, what uh, byproduct uh, or waste, uh, uh, there is. Uh, tons and tons of, uh, 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 of uh, possibility. Cereal mainly for uh, the coleoptera of uh, the Tenebrio mil uh, milvorm, and cereal it, it is produced and byproduct from cereal that are not uh, with uh, very low value at the moment uh, are all over the globe. Uh, 
concerning fruit and vegetables, but I will let the ne next protein uh, complete. Uh, there is a huge also opportunity. So our business at insects is not to, to feed our insect with a pure, uh, uh, let's say, uh, ingredient, is to use, in fact, what have very low value in our business in, uh, in, uh, on Earth for the, for the moment, and to, uh, to generate high value protein on these kind of things. Thank you, Frank. No Would limit. <laughs> no, no limit. Okay, great. So, what do you think, Louis? What uh, What is your point about? Yeah, well, um, I agree. I think most uh, of the elements were said by Frank. But uh, to complete on that one, third of food is wasted so far. So, it's a, a huge amount uh, that is available, and. Uh, so far, we are limited to fruits and vegetables, but who knows tomorrow what we could use as well as uh, new resources. Um, even if uh, from a regulatory standpoint, we are limited to uh, pre-consumer plant-based byproducts, who knows tomorrow what would be available. Um, so far, at least, we have really more than enough waste available and byproducts available to uh, reuse and nothing to produce at all to feed insects. Yes. Okay, great. Uh, maybe a question for, for Simon? Yeah. So I, I have one, one very simple question first to, for you to start. It's, uh, is, is your technology an alternative to genome engineering? Uh, or it is used to improve on, only uh, modified uh, genetically uh, bacteria or, or yeah so in our machine we mostly rely on uh, natural mutations so it, it is uh, it is suitable to develop uh, non genetically modified organisms uh, however historic historically the technology was developed to support uh, metabolic engineering projects and it's a nice tool to actually uh, fasten the development of such projects uh, and we, but we, we see that there is more and more demand on the non-GMO uh, aspect. And today we have uh, maybe a 50, 50 person, uh, 50, 50 uh, of, of both. Okay, thank you very much. I have uh, maybe noticed one question for, uh, for Frank, maybe. Why uh, scarab monitor mealworm is the insect for human food consumption? Why have you chosen that one and not another one? Uh, in, fa in fact, we start at the beginning with Milvon because of different uh, reasons. And then sure, now uh, I will answer to your question, but if you come back to the original, uh, uh, we didn't choose at the beginning Milvon uh, uh, for this special purpose. We chose Milvon because Milvon have huge capability uh, in terms of, uh, of uh, feedstock, in terms of process, and in terms of output. I will come back to that point later. But concerning, uh, concerning uh, um, uh, human consumption, uh, uh, the opportunity, uh, let's say, uh, it is the, the, the milworm uh, is one of the insects that generate a higher level of protein, 72% with the uh, insect way of rearing the, uh, the milworm. It is, uh, there is... Uh, there is other insect that can produce protein, but not at that rate. Uh, um, uh, it is a, one, one of the points. The, the, the second point, let's say, is, is um, we have identified uh, in aquaculture, uh, in pet food, uh, that uh, beside the protein rate, uh, there is also a health benefit. Uh, sometimes we just measure it in, in aquaculture, for example, on, on bass or or on, uh, on uh, shrimp, as far as I remember. Um, and uh, we also uh, uh, perform some um, uh, research on rats uh, uh, when we feed with an independent uh, uh, university in Germany. Uh, we feed r rats, uh, fatty rats, obese, uh, <laughs> uh, with a protein coming from milvorm. Uh, instead of other animal protein, and it have a very positive insect, so seventy percent decrease on cholesterol and on 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 a bad, let's say, uh, uh, lipid. So um, it and at the end we come to the point that there is an opportunity to uh, for for human food. In addition to that, the European Authority at the moment only authorize uh, uh, the milvorm as an entire insect. 
uh, uh, it will be officialized in, in the following weeks. Uh, there is a first uh, uh, an assessment, and after the final decision will come in the, in the following weeks. Uh, and our, uh, uh, let's say, process and our business is to uh, produce ingredients from, from Milvon. So, and the, the, the allergenic level, let's say, of uh, uh, a part of the insect, especially protein, is probably or most probably lower than the entire insect that is considered as safe by uh, Europe. So it means on different level, uh, uh, it's more than an opportunity, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's an option in the future. And, and what about next protein? Uh, why have you chosen or why are you working with fly? So as Etienne mentioned, so black mm -hmm. the fly are actually uh, an, an, is a, an insect that is often chosen by the industry because of the short life cycle that uh, it has. And the second main uh, big advantage is the flexibility in terms of feedstock. Uh, I think we insisted quite a lot on this aspect during the presentation, mm -hmm. but so its uh, ability to uh, feed on various resources on whatever uh, waste we receive is an amazing uh, advantage. And so that's why we, we decided to go for this insect specifically. Okay, thank you. Uh, one question for Simon. Uh, I guess maybe you have seen it. It's about uh, uh, bacteria to produce protein. What do, uh, do you know uh, if there are any um, advance in enzymatic hydrolysis of uh, linocellulosis? Do you know, do you have some data about that? Are you, you know, working? Yes, I, I, actually the, the global course of the process is uh, the accumulation of different steps. And what has been uh, limiting uh, was also the cost for uh, uh, producing the, uh, the sugars from the lignocellulosic. So there are different uh, kind of treatments, uh, as far as I know, uh, and enzymatics are, uh, are maybe the most popular. What I think that, again, the process must be, could be optimized, meaning that if, if you have to, to cool down a lot the, the, what enters in your fermenter, it costs very, very much. But if you adapt the strain to higher temperature and tolerate all the byproduct that are generated in the enzymatic process at the end of the day you can you can simplify your work process and 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 diminish the cost so uh so again i'm not very aware of the progress on that enzymatic processes but what we receive are demand to adapt the strains to the real uh, feedstock that comes from this the pretreatment and there is a, a lot to do i would say Okay. Okay. Uh, what about selection of uh, insect uh, using your technology, Simon? Is that something uh, you can uh, work on it, or you are, are you are you working on it? Just to conclude a little bit with this webinar, maybe as a last question. <laughs> no, I, I think it would be a very <laughs> huge gap. Uh, well, we we like microbes that that swim in water and uh, aqueous solutions, uh, so to say. But uh, I think that there are there are potential synergies because uh, uh, maybe insects can be fed with microbes, or the the the, the diet of the of the the insect could be supplemented by microbes. Or I think that there are a lot to do with uh, with this and. I think that NextProtein mentioned that uh, the, one of their products is also used to uh, feed the microbes in soil. And so there are a lot of interactions like, uh, eventually and the, the, it's, it's a whole ecosystem. Uh, yeah. And I think that uh, our uh, mission is, uh, to, is to open opportunities and maybe to, uh, to, to create new interactions. Exactly, no, I don't know if they have a uh, bacteria in their guts. Uh, in yes, they do. Yeah, they do. So, yeah, so you can work. Yeah? You can work on it. Yeah, we could do <laughs> probiotic for insects. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> well, why, not? Why, not? why not? Why not? That's a good, that's a good point. Okay, thank you. I think it's time to, to finish, huh, Johanna. Yes, it's time to finish now. Thank you. Uh, I would like to, to thank uh, Geno Paul and all the invited speakers for sharing their expertise. Uh, uh, I think uh, now uh, everyone can understand a little bit more about uh, what they are doing, how they do it, why they do it, 
and uh, uh, we understood that, that they are not going to save the planet, but at least uh, they contribute to save humanity on the planet because uh, the planet itself will probably survive to humanity. And what you have to do now is to, to make sure that uh, uh, we survive in the planet as long as possible. Uh, again, I hope you have you did appreciate our webinar and we invite you to participate to the next webinar on March 9, dedicated to plant-based protein purification. I saw there was one question about protein purification uh, on the chat. Uh, maybe you participate to our next, uh, let's say, uh, webinar to have uh, replies on that. If you are interested as well in, break, uh, in, in breakthrough technology to turn biomass into high valued molecule, don't forget uh, neither our digital edition of Bioket. Uh, Nail, uh, Laurent, many thanks for, for this uh, cooperation. Frank, Chloe, and all the speakers, uh, Simon, Simon as well. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, I wish you a very nice afternoon, a very nice day for those who are living in, in, in North America. And uh, thank you and see you soon. Bye bye. Thank, Thank you very much, everybody. You know, to contact us. Exactly.